Texas police uh, raided an organic farm. They had a warrant because they believed that there were marijuana plants on this organic farm. But the reality is uh, many neighbors around the area were complaining about code violations. Um, and that's probably the reason why the cops really went in because there was really no indication that there were marijuana plants to begin with. Now, what's amazing about this story is it wasn't just a few cops that showed up and asked some questions. They did a full raid with uh, a SWAT team. They had aerial surveillance surveillance. They had a uh, SWAT raid and 10 hour search, which is ridiculous. Like, let's say worst case scenario, they actually do have marijuana on this farm. Oh, my God. Like, really? You're going to send out SWAT to investigate it? You're going to have like a helicopter circling around the farm? Now, at this, four. it's I insane. Know, right. That's a plant that might actually make you feel a tiny bit better. <laughs> And actually might make you a tiny bit healthier. <laughs> DEFCON 4. How They're lucky they? they didn't get nuked. I wonder, How uh, so if they didn't have any indication there was marijuana before? From what I've seen, it doesn't seem like... Neighbors were complaining about the grass not being cut, and they thought that, you know, the wood, they had like chopped wood in areas where the neighbors were uncomfortable. They're like, that doesn't look good. So it was basically neighbors. Chopped ne wood gets you a SWAT team? Is it chopped wood in the wrong area? That's the whole gist of this story that I want to focus on. Like we're militarizing our police force and we are going above and beyond, you know, what we need to, to investigate certain situations. If the neighbors didn't like certain things about the farm and they were complaining about it, that's totally legitimate. <laughs> but this is not something that you do in response to those complaints. Now, Police did seize um, a few things from the farm, and I want to list those things for you. 17 blackberry bushes, mm. 15 okra plants, 14 tomatillo plants, and native grasses and sunflowers. Sunflowers? Yeah. Well, that changes everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. You also, uh, did, do we have a graphic on, uh, on what was in the yard? Uh, in yes, the yard? we do. Because you didn't mention this. This is why I'd sent SWAT in. All right, so local authorities had cited uh, the Garden of Eden, that's the name of the garden, in recent weeks for code violations, including grass that was too tall, bushes growing too close to the street, a couch and piano in the yard. There was a <laughs> piano in the yard. Okay. <laughs> Chopped wood uh, that was not properly stacked. Come on, really? A piece of uh, siding that was missing from the side of the uh, house and generally uncleaned premises. I wonder whether this was a case, uh, I don't know how big it was, this, this is a small organic farm. I wonder like if, if, if the extent of the response in Arlington was, which is just outside of Dallas, was uh, that like if these were like, if somebody was connected, if some of the neighbors were important oh, people. Oh, I see. And yeah. that that sort they of, found something. And, they, and they So it's interesting. called in a chit. Uh -huh. I, I've driven around the South a lot. Right, and and I see interesting things in the front yard. Uh, old yeah, cars, sure. some a lot of times buses for some. They have a whole bus in their front yard. Uh, then uh, laundry, like it, like old washing machines, etc. I don't mean laundry as in the clothes. I mean actually the machines, etc. I've never seen a piano. Never seen a piano. No. That's okay, a, so that's a step up. That's right. A new one. And, and, well, apparently you, they know why. Word has gotten around the south. There's a piano outside. You get the SWAT team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like, what yeah. what did he think? Like. There might be a young budding Liberace in there with some okra. <laughs> okay. Okay. We better get to work here. This we is a serious situation. We were, we were going to take the regular cop cars, but let's take the SWAT mobile and yeah. get over there. And, and I got news for you, okay? If you're growing illicit, illegal material in your backyard, you don't put a piano in your front yard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't and go, hey, I'm over here. Exactly. Uh, other raids, it says here at the end of the story, have been conducted on food co-ops and Amish farms suspected of selling unpasteurized milk products. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Man, we've apparently Wait. solved crime in Arlington, Texas. <laughs> yeah. They got nothing to do. They're like, should we go after the okra again? No, no, nah, no. let's go get the milk from the Wait a minute. SWAT You're teams? not kidding. No. No, so no, the, there's more, so there's the, more. So they're saying, are these Amish farms are selling raw milk. That's what they're doing. <laughs> and they're sending in SWAT yeah. for yeah. raw milk? No, and no, the no, Amish guys are like, but we don't have refrigerators. What yeah, the fuck what did you expect from us? What did we do? Oh, man. SWAT teams have been called out for like the dumbest things. Alcohol inspections at a bar in, uh, in Virginia, raid bars uh, for suspected underage drinking in New Haven, to perform license inspections at barber shops in Orlando, Florida, <laughs> to raid a gay bar in Atlanta where police suspected customers and employees were having public sex. That's what we're sending SWAT teams out for now. Now to be fair to the SWAT guys though, the barber shops, they got sharp objects. They do. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but to end on a serious point, I mean look at what Anna said in the beginning, the over-militarization and, and the overwhelming force. 
You don't need the SWAT team for a license inspection, man. You don't need the SWAT team for okra. It's so dumb. Well, and just like this guy in Lancaster, it's like this paratrooper mentality where you just have to kind of storm these places and just use the Colin Powell phrase overwhelming force and that being this sort of way of policing. And it just seems like maybe that's a consequence of like the post 9-11 era where all the yeah. tax dollars flooded into these jurisdictions. They bought all this cool gear. And when you've got cool gear, you got to use it. Like if you, if you have a cool car in the garage, you got to drive it. You got a cool boat or, or a cool gun. Yeah. Yeah, look, it's, I think Brian's 100% right. It's the same thing as the guys who have the guns, right? They can't wait to use it. God, mm -hmm. they've been training and training, if you're lucky, right? And they got the gun and it looks and they've shot it so many times at a range. Oh, if a bad guy would just walk into my house. How? Or if I'm doing an, you know, a night watch, if, if I see one of those assholes who's gonna get away with it again, mm. this time he's not gonna get away with it. Now the same thing applies to the cops, unfortunately, when they get all this military gear. God, we've shot it so many times in the range, but wouldn't it be great to like raid an okra plant and do some shock and okra? How? <laughs> <laughs> shock and okra.